Well, we've had so many requests on how to install SharePoint that, uh, you know, I've just finally decided to uh, bite the bullet and go ahead and do one. Um, so with that being said, we're going to start a uh, SharePoint Administrator training course. Ultimately, the goal of this course is to uh, show the user how to, to install SharePoint and, uh, you know, how to manage its day-to-day -day operations. So. With that being said, uh, there's a few things that we're going to need. We'll need a computer to install SharePoint on. This will be the server. And then we'll need uh, three Microsoft products. Uh, Windows Server 2008 R2, uh, Microsoft SQL Server 2008 R2, and Microsoft SharePoint Server 2010. The good news is that the, all the software that we uh, need can actually be downloaded for free on the tr uh, trial versions or using the trial versions is what we did. We're not going to do the walkthrough for Windows Server 2008 or 2. Uh, basically you're just going to need to burn that software to an ISO and then um, really just follow the prompts and, it, it, and then you're going to come to a screen which, which I'm going to show you right here and ultimately you're just going to go through the list. I've, I've already done that, I've already named the computer, I've already done the automatic updates don't worry about this stuff. Um, we actually use something called Rackspace uh, Cloud where we can actually just turn on a server and, and some other stuff. So it may look a little different to you. And I've already download all, or downloaded the software packages. So I'm not going to um, you know, just say, hey, do this. I'm actually going to give you the links. Uh, here's the link to uh, Windows Server 2003 or 2. Uh, here's the link for Microsoft uh, SQL Server 2008 R2. Where are you going to want to go here? Okay, so you're going to want to go up here and do the 64-bit. Um, and then finally, uh, there's the uh, SharePoint Server 2010 trial. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, basically, you need to get your computer completely up to date, named and everything, and then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to promote this to a domain controller. Now the install that we're doing is really not like the easiest way to install SharePoint. We could install SharePoint Foundation and you know basically just get it done quite quickly but the whole goal of this course is actually to give you a little bit uh, more substance so that way you can kind of learn really what goes on uh, behind the scenes. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to turn this machine into a domain controller. You do that by typing in uh, DC promo, start run DC promo. And I'll check to see if the domain services are installed, and if not, uh, it'll start this uh, process. Now, a domain controller, really, the way to think of a domain controller is kind of like the, um, I guess, the core of any Windows network, um, or Windows domain more specifically, and it kind of uh, manages all of the security stuff, like the security users, groups, and, and things like that. So we'll just go ahead and hit next, next. We're going to want to create a new forest. Uh, you're going to want to put in a domain. Um, I have, or we own nextstar.com and sharepointpittsburgh.org, so I can use this. If you don't know what you're doing, um, if you don't know what you're doing, put local at the end of here. So maybe just do uh, mytest.local. That's probably a good one to use. So I'm going to use nextstar.local. That way it won't goof up with some of the MX records and some technical stuff uh, when we set up email. So you should be either, you know, you either know what you're doing here or you're typing in, you know, your name.local or mytest.local. For our purposes, I'm just going to assume you guys typed in uh, mytest. I'm going to go ahead and raise the uh, functional level. There's no reason not to. And we're going to add a d DNS server. Yes next and then we'll just type in our passwords okay and hit next uh, that password if for some reason your domain uh, your ntds.dit I believe it is uh, or anyways basically there's a database that has all of your users and security groups and things like that and if for some reason that ever fails uh, you have to boot your machine into uh, a restoration mode that's what this password is for uh, you're probably never going to need it. Um, you know, we've done a few restores for that on, on machines that we haven't designed or built or maintained ourselves, but uh, it's, it's very rare. So 
you know, it's just, just one of those things. I figure while we'll wait, I'll tell you what it is. So it's going to go ahead and build the domain uh, now. Um, I'm going to use the magic of Camtasia to speed this up. And for all of our, you know, installs, I'm going to do that because uh, otherwise it would just, this video would take forever. Once we're done with the domain, we're going to start creating some uh, some user groups and, we're gonna and users, and I'm going to show you how to do that. So let's go ahead and restart, and then uh, once once it restarts, we'll get rolling on the SQL installation. Okay, and now we've restarted and we're back in, and now we have this thing called a domain. So let's go ahead and figure out what this is all about. We'll go to uh, search or whatever, type in MMC, which is a Microsoft Management Console. This is how you manage servers. We'll go to File, Add, Remove, Snap-in, double-click on Active Directory Users and Computers, hit OK. And this is really, uh, this is a domain controller, and you'll see here that uh, we have all these different, there's the administrator user, which is our only user, and we have all these different uh, security groups. Probably have one computer here, SB2010, which is the domain controller. And on a regular Windows network, we'd probably see a bunch of computers, maybe some other groups and things like that. So now we see that we have one user, um, just the administrator, which makes sense, and we have all these other security groups. Uh, that's, what, that's what these are. And you can actually see when you scroll out here. Um, security groups, a type, type of uh, security group. Um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new user. So I'm just going to copy. Uh, let's see here. Leo. And we'll put uh, leo at nextstar.com. Hit next. I'll put in my password. Okay, and I'm not going to have my password ever expire. So I'll hit finish. So now here's, here's me. So now, uh, let's see here, what do we want to do? So now we, we have this thing, which is the, you know, we dialed into the management console. We, ha we can control all the security groups. I'm going to create um, something, I'm going to create a new group, new security group, group, and we'll just call this database administrators. Just hit OK. Now I'm going to add users to the group. Members, add. I can just type in LE. It should be able to check names. Leo, hit OK. OK, so now I'm a database administrator. OK, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to install Microsoft SQL Server 2008 R2. Temp. Alright, so I like to extract everything to the temp directory so that way I remember to delete it when I'm done. So now that this is extracted, or it's almost extracted, I'm going to go to computer, C colon, temp, and we're almost done. Almost. Okay, now we're done. Go in here and click the setup. And we should see a window pop up any second here. We're going to go ahead and click on installation, new installation. It'll run the uh, prerequisites, you know, everything passed, so I'm not going to worry about uh, looking at the details. So now we're just going to go ahead and use the evaluation version. We'll hit next. I accept. If you can send feature data if you would like to, hit next. We'll install the uh, support files, and then we'll go ahead with the, uh, the primary installation. Okay, and then you'll see um, some warnings and stuff like that. I'm not worried about those. I'm going to hit next. I know what all that stuff is. Hit next. Click on full text search and management tools complete. Hit next. Next. Next is pretty easy. Next. Okay. So here we're going to specify some uh, user accounts. So let's go ahead and open up our management console. And you can do things like a new organizational unit. We'll call this services accounts. Okay. And then we're going to create a, um, if you look, let's see if I can get the windows 
lined up properly. Okay, so we're going to want to go right-click, New User. It's a best practice to uh, run your services um, not as all, all as one account. And it's primarily for security reasons, but also for stability reasons. In fact, SharePoint will yell at you if, if you uh, have everything running as all one account. So let's go ahead and name this account. We'll call this SQL Server Agent. And then SQL uh, Agent. Hit next, put in a password. Okay, so there's one. And we'll go ahead and create a new account, new user. We'll call this SQL Server Database Engine, SQL Engine. And you can name them whatever you want. That's just a standard uh, naming convention that I've come up with. Let's see if I actually got the passwords the same. I did. Okay. So here what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and then add these accounts. So this one was the agent. And okay. Then we'll put in the password. Okay. And then the next one, this will be uh, engine. And if you don't actually uh, have a completely unique uh, name, it'll, it'll list the ones that uh, it matches. That's why you saw two come up there. Then we'll go ahead and put in this password. Okay, there we go. Now, uh, who do we want to be able to administer this database? Uh, we'll add the current user, the administrator, that, that's us. And then we'll add that database administrator groups. Because eventually we're going to be uh, logging in as ourselves, and um, you know, basically, in in real world environment, you don't have your SharePoint admin managing the uh, you know domain, managing the databases, managing the web servers. Ultimately, you're going to have um, you know experts managing each individual piece, uh, but you know, for us, we get to manage the whole thing, and that's really a best practice. Um, but in our case, we get to manage everything and play with it all. So we're going to go ahead and hit install here. It'll take some uh, time to complete. And then whenever we're done, it'll ask us to reboot. And then we'll um, go ahead and install SharePoint. OK, and we're done. So I'll just go ahead and hit close. DX, close out of this. Nope. Close. I will check for updates. It's always good to make sure you're fully updated before you do any installs. Install that. We'll go ahead and restart now and then uh, we'll start installing SharePoint.